we are hard to deal with. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think over time, you can become jaded mm. and become, you know, when you see that black person, your fellow black person walk in, you might not be as... <sighs> You might become more suspicious than optimistic. And that kind of leads you to bad customer service. Yep. So it's kind of like a chicken or the egg thing. Do you think? So um, let's, let's start here. Let's start here. Okay. Hair, hair, right? <laughs> um, if, if you guys could explain to men, especially black men, what hair means to the black woman, how would you try to make that make sense for us? I would say, honestly, so easy to say, hair is confidence. Mm. Like your hair, how your hair looks can determine exactly how you feel. Like I know for some time for me, if my hair isn't done, I probably won't go outside because I don't feel the prettiest. But now I'm in this space where I can put my bunny and I can go outside and I can feel beautiful. But it's taken me time and a journey to go through that you know, space of figuring out how do I want to wear my hair? Do I feel pretty like this? What are other people going to say about my hair? So um, long story short, I think it's all about confidence, really. What would you say, Courtney? Um, what does my hair mean to me? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like my hair or any other woman, how they may feel is that their hair actually describes them. Mm-hmm. Like certain people wear color hair. Some people wear long hair. Everything can also describe you based off your appearance. I feel like some days you might want to be this girl. Tomorrow you want to be somebody else. That's why black women have wigs. So we going to get into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our hair defines us. Yeah, that's that's really good. I'm going to ask you a specific question. Okay. Because we we talked about it before. And then I'm going to ask you all as well. So remember I asked you, does a different hairstyle attract a different type of guy? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. One thousand percent. One hundred percent. Um when I'm wearing my hair in an afro or more of a natural style, I'll get men who are like, Hey Queen, you look so good. Just Bingo. The mother right? Yes. Um or even if I'm wearing a wig that or I don't wear wigs, but if I'm wearing a protective style that's curly, very big, I get that type of response. I found that when I wore bundles. I didn't really get any feedback from people. And I don't know if it's because I blend it in more. That's what they're used to seeing. But you definitely do get a different response. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's dope. Because you can stand out at different elements and different levels and Mm -hmm. then attract different people. Mm -hmm. I feel like... Wait, what was the question? What, what, how, how have you noticed the difference in guys that you attract based on the, the, the way you wear your hair? See... I might see not trying to be funny, but bust down middle part with my suit on businesswoman. I might track a businessman. Mm-hmm. If I got, let me think, different hairstyle, short, blunt cut, wavy, I might track some man that want to be at the gym all the time. Like, it, it all depends on how your hair look. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what she said. It, it really depends on what that person likes. So, for me, for example, I was seeing a guy in. <laughs> I was seeing a man, oh, man. <laughs> a man, and for some reason he liked my braids, and I'm like, why do you like my braids? And I was seeing another guy like years prior, and he liked my natural hair. So it's like we honestly never know what that we never know how to wear our hair to impress a guy because every guy like different things. Yes, like some men me. do not like weave, like do not come around me with weave on. They don't like lashes. It's like they want that natural look, twenty four seven all the time. So most men. Just from what I I hear, they do prefer more of a natural look. Mm -hmm. Because I think they're questioning what they're signing up for when you take all of that stuff off. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like it looks good, you know, when you're all Mm -hmm. glammed up and stuff. But if you look way different when I'm laying down with you, then it's 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 a problem. Definitely. Like, what do you really look like up under there? So... It, this is going to be like a shallow thing, but I'm noticing like hairdressers, they want you come and washed. <laughs> oh, they God. want you blow dried. They want you like detangled. What's the deal with that? Is that even legal? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I feel like that's I feel like that's not accurate. As a hairstylist job, you're supposed to wash the clients here. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm sorry. I don't care what nobody say. Because even we can, us clients, we can go wash our hair and it's not fully washed the way you want it. It's still grease in our hair. It's still oil in our hair. Then you right. still have to wash it again. Or the fact that you're upset because it's oil in our hair and you don't feel like washing it out. Like, 
I don't think that's a part of the rules at all to not wash your client's hair, period. <laughs> I can't relate to that life. I found me a hairdresser who does not want you to come in with your hair washed. Like, she will oh, do it see, for you. It's good. mandatory. They should want to do not. it. They should want to do you it. You just got to... This... The class of... I shouldn't say that. The type of women nowadays that are in that industry, mm-hmm. the customer service is just lacking in so many different mm-hmm. kind of ways. And I, I remember... Uh, I tried to have someone do my hair and they told me that my hair was too thick and they were like, I can't manage hair like this. Or they said something like, um, it's not my job to make sure that your hair is healthy. I'm a stylist. Like those are red flags for me because your hair is your crown. You don't want people messing with your energy and taking your hair out. But I don't know. I just feel like um, a lot of women nowadays, we're not used to caring for our own hair. And I think that shows with people who are doing hair as well. Like they'll, Bust down middle part. They give you a sewing. They give you all different types of things. But trying to find someone who can maintain and manage natural hair is a little bit more challenging. Right. Yes. I can agree to that. Well, I mean, that, that brings me to a question about, like, black-owned business, right? Like, you know, the Honey Hair Company is a premium luxury brand. Yeah. But in a way, which is weird to me, they're kind of an outlier because most hair manufacturers are Asian. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Most hair consumers are black. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Women. So y'all make it make sense for me. Why is it that it's easier, we're quicker to spend money with Asians than, than companies black. like, yeah, Honey Hair Company? That's a good question. Me, like you said, uh, customer service. Customer service is everything. Customer mm-hmm. service is key. You have people that, I mean, sometimes people like black women, You can, we have to agree that sometimes our attitude is bad where we're not satisfied with the products that we're receiving. Mm-hmm. So that's already a red flag, not being satisfied with what you just spend all your money on when you know that there's vendors out here and people across China who you just got to send a text to and they going to do the job. But- Customer service is key. You have to learn how to talk to people and then communicate with them on what the issue is. Some people will just drag it or even like, for example, with running a business, period, like if people don't receive the services that they pay for, they're not satisfied or they're not happy or they're filing a complaint or they're disputing their orders. And it just be like that falls back on the black business because all we had to do was communicate with each other. But yeah. someone didn't take the time out to take the initiative and actually communicate what the problem was. I would say, so I feel like people are sometimes used to what they know. Right. And I know for me, all we know is like Asian vendors. Like when we first started wearing hair, we were, we was getting it from like Asian vendors, right? So I feel like people got used to that and they don't really want to go out of the norm of that. So it's like, why shop there when I've been doing this all this long time? So I think it's all about just breaking that cycle of doing something that you've always been used to. Well, that's funny. You, you want to go before I piggyback? I got something to say. I, I don't see. know how it's going to be received, but... We received um, it on. I mean, I think that other cultures come in and they capitalize off the fact that we don't support one another. So that's number one. I mean, if you think about other cultures, when they come here, they establish their business and they're putting money back into the community so that other people can start a business and they have a cultural enclave of people who are doing well. The thing that I find is that... um, And I'll just speak for myself. I love to support Black-owned businesses. Customer service can be lacking. But a lot of the time, because we we don't have a lot of mainstream production, the pricing is more expensive. And so for me as a consumer, I need a little bit more than just saying you're Black for me to spend three times the money with you Mm -hmm. than somebody else. Exactly. And I also need to know if your your reasoning is, well, you should support me because I'm a Black-owned business. What are you doing to reinvest back into the community? Mm -hmm. Let's get into it. And I'm not seeing that. I think a lot of people are, you know, kudos to them. They're successful in their business, but they're not giving back. And for me, it's not justification to put money in your pocket if you're not doing the same in return to give back. Yeah, definitely. Like Like, what value do you bring? Mm -hmm. What value do you add to this community? Right. You were going to say something, Courtney? Mm-mm. She, <laughs> okay. She, okay. Said, she said what was needed. I like gotcha. that. Okay, so if, if, you know, if you guys had to represent the black female delegation as the number one consumers, okay. and the people watching are black-owned, uh, you know, whether they also sell beauty products, whether they sell food, whatever the case may be, how would you get it across to them as far as like what they need to do to be competitive for your business compared to the Asians or, 
other people who are vying for your money? Well, like what you talked about earlier, customer service is everything. Mm -hmm. Because if you got a bad attitude, like you were saying, I'm not going to want to shop with you. Sure. You got to bring some value. I'm all about value and customer service. If you got those two, then I'm coming to you. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. treat people the way you want to be treated. I know it's like so kindergarten, but when I give service, I'm going to make sure it's top tier. Top notch. So when I receive service, I want to receive it the same exact way. Mm. I like that. I like what you said. Yeah. I'm I'm going to play God's advocate for a second because as a black business owner, as somebody who's worked um in sales with black people, mm -hmm. and I'm sure she could attest to this as well, um we are hard to deal with. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I think over time you can become jaded. Mm -hmm. and become, you know, when you see that black person, your fellow black person walk in, you might not be as, <sighs> you might become more suspicious than optimistic. And that kind of leads you to bad customer service. Yep. So it's kind of like a chicken or the egg thing. Do you think if black business owners had better customer service, the customers would be, would be better? Or if the customers were better, the customer service would improve. If the people was better, both. It could it could tie both ways because it's like, I, I me personally, I want to know who I'm talking to before I purchase anything. Or if you're a company, like I'm, I, I'm real big on reviews. Mm -hmm. Like all reviews don't lie. People, oh, reviews. they be lying. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm gonna read the reviews. Let me see what these people are saying. What right. services have they received? What was their feedback? And Sometimes reach out. Why do you feel this way? What went wrong? And receive an actual honest opinion. So it could be on both behalves because it could be the person who's actually consuming the product or the other person. It's like, mm, yeah, what depends. she said. We got to meet each other halfway. As Personality is everything. It's like, who are you as a person? Why should I shop with you? I want you to bring value to me both ways. It got to be both ways. Everything but I also think true. like... Like, now nah, I think like that. If you have a service, you want that customer. So you got to be willing to do everything in your power to make sure that you provide that service. Mm -hmm. So me as a business owner, I'm going to make sure that I'm the one trying to get you to shop with me. So my customer service is going to be good to you from the jump. So you can come back. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to come up to you with a great attitude. I'm going to come up to you offering value Tonight. and compassion and just being very genuinely, you know, wanting you to purchase with me mm -hmm. versus you don't have to come to me and add anything because I want you. Like, you don't need me. You can go anywhere in this world to get what you need, but you came here. So I so owe I you that satisfaction. That. So yeah. almost like the customer's always right. That needs to be definitely, the yeah, absolutely. definitely. Sometimes some customers be wrong as shit. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie to you. Sometimes <laughs> customers can just be sideways, and right. they know they sideways, and it's just be like, "Who are you?" And then I just easily refund or just let you have whatever you want because you <laughs> just not a good person it. mentally. Like yeah. I already see where your head is at and how you communicate. It's not on my platform. I'm gonna throw this question to you, Ty. Can, before you do that, can I? Um, sure. Can we take a, a couple steps back? I want to explain something you said. Sure, sure. Because you said that we can be difficult to deal with. I've done customer service for a long time in my past, and I think that there are customers of all races who are horrible. But I think that some of the burdens that we kind of carry as Black people is that if we're a bad customer, it's attributed to our race. Mm. And it's if a white person comes in or any other ethnicity. It's not because they're white, they're this. It's just it's that person, mm -hmm. their personality. Mm -hmm. So it's like I now have to become a representative for the whole community when I'm interacting with you for you to not look at me that way. And I think we have to be mindful of that, too. And that kind of goes back to how we view black-owned businesses as well, right? There's not, which I don't know the statistics, Um in terms of how many black-owned businesses there are versus non-black-owned businesses, but I imagine they're not equal. Sure. And so we're probably going to interact more with white-owned businesses or other ethnicities than black ones. So because we don't have that much of a pool, it's like any little interaction we have, we attribute it to the whole community of black-owned businesses. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I think we just have to be careful of those biases that we have with one another. Mm, that's good. Absolutely. Yeah, you hit I agree with you. So the question I was going to ask you was, from a guy's point of view, it seems like 
there's been a rise in women switching up their style. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Are we tripping? Or does it seem like, you know, let's say between 2005 and now, like everybody has a wall that look like that and everybody is doing this this week and this th next week. Are we tripping as men? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. We need to talk. I'll say something first <laughs> because ahead, I've noticed it. It's like everybody want to be like this. It's this thing that everybody just want to be like. And it's like everybody's following that, that aesthetic, like the it girl or what is that girl? Like who, why does everybody want to be that girl? Mm -hmm. The nice high rise apartment with the nice car and mm -hmm. the nice clothes, the, the purses all in the closet. It's like, why do we want to be that girl so much? Mm -hmm. Why can't we just not settle with being normal, but why can't normal be that? Like, who's to say it's normal? Who's to say that's the thing we need to be? Like, why can't we just all be free and society mm -hmm. has really just, I feel so bad for the younger generation. Mm -hmm because they are not going to be able to be themselves mm -hmm. because they're going to always try to be that because everybody else is trying to be that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's people going that? to high school looking like how we have our That's makeup done saying, right like now, the prom, right? The prom pictures mm -hmm. from when we were in high school yeah. versus yeah. now. So it's, different. Nobody is set apart anymore. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't tripping. Mm. But what if, we ain't tripping. Us women ain't tripping looking at, no offense, other women. Mm. But you do have some women who... I mean, it's a great, the girl is great. Her life is great. I guess that's why everybody wants to be that image, but it's mm -hmm. like. What is it? You don't have to be that image to be, you can be you. Mm -hmm. And you can still have a great life. And that goes on to say, like, how success, like, we all look at success in different, you know, definitions. Like, who's to say that's successful? Mm -hmm. You could get all that and still not be Ooh, happy. you on a whole nother mm. element now. That's where I'm at. Mm. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, I got this. I got I'm I'm the it girl. I'm that girl. I'm I'm social media. But it's like what makes famous. you that girl? It's like I'm right. not even happy. And you still empty inside. But well, you got everything that I want. 